Hello Internet. So today we're going to go over how to dockerize your Visual Studio Code environment so that you can have the same environment locally as you have in production. Also, we're going to go over how to set up plugins, global installs, and settings so that you can have one click installs for new hires. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's jump into the code. Today I'll be creating an example of a JavaScript environment, but this could work for any language supported by Visual Studio Code. I'm going to use Create React App as an example so we can see things like hot reloading at the end. The first thing you're going to need to make sure you have installed is Docker. We're going to obviously need Docker to dockerize our containers, so make sure you have that installed first. I'll put some links to the installers in the description below. But pause the video and make sure you have that first. The first and only dependency we need, other than Docker, is a plugin called Remote Containers. So you can search for that in Plugins, and you'll find this plugin here. So this is a plugin created by Microsoft, and it allows us to run a container very easily from inside Visual Studio Code. Once you have this installed, you'll see a new icon down the bottom left. I already had it installed, so I already had the icon. If you don't see it, you can probably just close Visual Studio Code and reopen it, and you'll probably see it there. And it will give us a couple of new commands, like reopening container. We're gonna use this in a minute once we have created our container. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a new folder called .dev container. The naming is very important on this because the plugin will actually look for this folder when we open it in a container. So make sure it's .dev container. Inside the .dev container, we're going to create a couple of files. The first one we're going to look for is the settings. So we're going to create a new file in here. And it's going to be called devcontainer.json. So in the devcontainer.json, and make sure you've called this devcontainer.json and not .devcontainer.json because the naming again is super specific here. We're going, this is a JSON file, so we're going to give it our angle brackets, and then we're going to give it the first thing key of name. The name is like an identifier for our environment, so we'll see it actually running below to make sure we're in the right in, uh, container. So we're going to call this JSN because we're creating a JavaScript environment. And then we're going to point it to a Docker file. We haven't created this yet, but we are going to call it Docker file. And that's the Docker file we'll create after we create this file itself. And then the app ports are the ports we want exposed. And it takes an array of ports. So we know Create React App runs on port 3000 by default, but you could give it more like 8080, 3001, or whatever else you need to do to have open. But we'll just leave it with 3000 for now. Then we're going to give it some run args, which is the arguments we want to run with, which is an array as well. And we're going to say minus u and node because we want it to run in a node environment. Then we will give it a settings object. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. I'm going to identify a workbench other theme here and give it Cobalt 2 by West Bowles. and we'll install that in a second and more importantly we're going to give it a default terminal so you can see we have some prefills here so we're going to pick Linux because I'm on a Mac OS so we want to see some differences at the end and 
we're going to set it to bash because I'm on ZSH by default. I want to see that it actually changed. Okay. After this, we're going to create our post create command. And the post create command is what we want to run after we create the image. And that's going to be npm install. And then we're going to give some extensions. So the extensions we're going to give our, we're going to have to give the something like prettier. So everyone likes to have prettier auto make their stuff look good. So what we're going to do is we're going to install it. So ESPN, EN, e dot prettier minus BS code. Now I'll show you where I got that name in a second. It's not just something I memorized. And then because we're using Cobalt 2, we're going to actually install that theme as well. So we're going to go to Wesbos and theme and Cobalt 2. Okay. So that should be everything we need in this file. And now let's create our Docker file. So let's create a new file, Docker file. And it has to be Docker file because we named it here, Docker file. And inside the Docker file, we're going to pick our version of Node that we want. And I'm going to pick the, uh, the most latest stable version at the time of recording, which is 12.16.1 Fresh. And we're going to run our global installs then, which since we are using the Prettier plugin, we'll globally install Prettier. Okay, so that's everything we should need to get started. So let's just first quickly check what version of Node I have before we jump into the container. 12.10. So we should see 12.16.1 when we actually reopen this in a container. Okay, so let's try reopen it. And it will take a couple of minutes the first time you launch this to install, but then it, Docker is smart enough to cache a lot of your commands so it doesn't take as long every time. But let's reopen this. And you'll see it running and installing. And I had a dev container here already, so I'm gonna hit rebuild again just to make sure that we're getting it as expected. And let's jump back in as soon as this is installed. Okay, so you can see now that we've got our lovely Cobalt 2 theme. So if you wanted to set up themes for your whole company, this is a way of doing it. I don't think it's necessary, but it's a good way to make sure that your stuff is running uh, after you install it anyway. Uh, I probably wouldn't ship it to everyone so they don't get your own preferences. But more importantly, what we want to see is what was installed when we had this. So we have inside a dev container here, prettier, which we've said here, and the Cobalt theme. So if you look at the names here, so I got the names here from Wesbos theme minus Cobalt 2. So th that's where you would grab the names of these things. So if you want to add another plugin straight into your container, that's pretty easy. You can just have a look and say, if we say we want the ESLint plugin, we can, let's just pick one or even prettier ESLint. We can add, right click and add to devcontainer.json. And when we jump back to devcontainer.json, it will automatically add that awkward thing to type because it's definitely not kind of human readable. But let's try running our container now. So, npm start to run our application. Okay, so now we have our to be open on port 3000 like we opened above. 
So let's open that over here. And wow, there we go. So we have our Create React app running inside a container. And just to make sure it's running as expected, let's make a little modification here. App.js and say delete this line and go hello world from container of course compiling lovely and then oh yes we have auto updated it so hot reloading is working so and then just to show that we have the correct node version in here Yes, we're on 12.16, and we're also in Bash, you can see here. So this gets a lot of those fidgety requirements out of the way that sometimes can be a pain to document and share with your whole team. So it's definitely worth setting up because anyone that wants it can have it. Um, there's a long list of commands that can be found for this file, especially the settings file, and that can be found on the site here. So if I'll link this in the description below, but you'll see there is lots of different settings we can add. I've just done a bare bones basic setup. So you could take some time and get your complicated setup if there's any more features you need. I know this does it for me for most of my JavaScript projects. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and if you want to have a look with my container, you can grab a copy of it from my GitHub in the description below. So that's all from this video. And if you found it helpful, I'd love if you subscribed and liked the video so I can keep on creating good content like this.